So I thought, um, since you are the largest European internet company, private one, I will bring you a guest. Nikki, please come on stage. So Hakan, this is your <laughs> seventh NOAA conference, I think, or? Feels like, huh? And Auto One, I mean, for the ones who are, I mean, who doesn't know Auto One? Quite a few. Come, Nikki. We're going to interview Hakan now. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> this is the smallest dog I know. It's Nikki, the dog from my girlfriend. And I thought it would, uh, you would like a little bit of humor. <laughs> of course. So, as Prince already was sitting with this white Angora cat, I'm <laughs> going to interview now like, like that. <laughs> no, but t tell us a little bit about Auto One. Um, while most people worked on car buying, uh, you launched a very successful service on selling your car. Last night you said it's about liquidity and making a, an asset, the biggest purchase, uh, liquid. Talk, what is the core problem Auto One is uh, solving? Sure. So um, when we started the company, we very quickly came across two problems that we're solving. And, and one is a very, very consumer uh, uh, problem. How do I sell my car? Uh, and back then, it was tw 2012, there was no instant solution like we all used in, if you want so, spoiled e-commerce customers who are just used and that the, the, the industry standard is that you can always get in touch with the company, that they always put customer first. Everything that we've learned in e-commerce and it has made e-commerce so successful uh, wasn't really there when it came to selling your car. So we said, okay, we need to fix this. There needs to be a platform. There needs to be somebody you can interact with. There needs to be something where you can decide Sunday night at 3 a.m. I want to get rid of my car and have an appointment Monday night, Monday morning at 9 a.m. And people are actually really there and expect you to be there. So that's problem number one. How do I liquidate this asset? And uh, the problem number two, which was the turn side of uh, our purchasing, was how do dealers actually get supply? And um, Car dealers need a certain amount of stock. They need a certain mix of stock. And the question is, where do they get it? Where do they get it in a structured way, in a wholesale way, in a professional partner way? And we connected these two, first in Germany. Interestingly, 2012, end of 12, we started. All of 13 was a German-only uh, uh, company in How terms big of is trade. Germany now of your business more? Uh, Germany is now smaller, uh, less than half. Yeah, let's put it this way. Uh, um, and even smaller than that. Um, but, uh, I mean, we saw that when we add in countries, yeah. we bring incremental network value. And in very, very few cases of a marketplace, adding any of the sites brings incremental value to any sites of the market. Let me explain it in an easier way. If I have a food marketplace, a Europe-wide food marketplace, if I add a burger restaurant in London, the incremental value for the customer in Paris is not so high, because he will not wait for the train to come with a burger, apparently. If I add a selling hub with Compramos to Coche in Bilbao, my dealers in Finland can profit from this supply. But if I add a buying dealer in Berlin, my seller in Paris can profit from it. So you have a win-win on whichever side of the network you add a node, and that brings us uh, uh, a lot of more liquidity and a lot more buying power by, by, by connecting this market. How, how much, what's the percentage of cars roughly you sell internationally where you go cross-country? No, it's, it's around about the half of the car. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay, well, that, that makes buy. it a lot easier. And you raised quite a bit of money. I think SoftBank is an uh, investor. Um, how, how much money have you raised in total? Um, yeah, I think it was in the press around about a billion euros. Around, around a bit. And that's because it's not just a marketplace. You're taking ownership of the car, even sometimes just for minutes. Yeah. But um, yeah, you give, give the money out immediately, so you yes. had to finance working capital. And there are a lot of copycats uh, of, of your model now in different countries. We had in, in, in London, we also had the Frontier Car Group, etc. But you're obviously the largest player. Um, did you see like a margin erosion because you buy the car and then you sell it actually to the professional? Now with the classified model, you're also selling it to the private. But do you see a margin pressure? Is it 
did it become tougher for you? I think, I mean, in our core markets, and we, we buy in 13 countries in Europe, and we sell in over 30 countries pretty much everywhere in Europe. Uh, we don't, we still don't have a direct competitor. And I think uh, the, the challenge to now enter the market would really be, we have all these dealers that buy from us, they're recurring customers, they trust us, and we have been lucky and successful, if you want, that we started where there was no competition. So if you build a two-sided marketplace, supply and demand need to be in sync. Yes. Yeah? But when we started, we had phenomenal growth, but it was still organic growth. Now, when you come to the market as a new player, be it on the buying or on the selling end, you really start from scratch. So if you go to dealers and say, hey, why don't you buy cars from me? I have three on my lot. Um, that's not really helpful because they won't take you serious. If you go and start buying and say, hey, we want to buy your car, if you don't have 60,000 dealers like us and the captive bank and everything lined up, your pricing will not be as tough. So you have huge uh, entry barriers, right? Capital, dealers. So first mover is the right mover advantage. It, it's a highly fragmented, highly undercapitalized market. And uh, I think also there's an operational angle to it. We do more than a million physical car shipments a year. Yeah, on on trucks. That makes you the biggest car dealer in Europe with a huge margin probably, right? So what are the OEMs saying about this? I remember I lured Hakan to uh, London and I said to him, Please come, we are even going to do a dinner for you and we are inviting all the OEMs and no, no OEM wanted to meet Auto One. Actually one, but he was out of the job and he told us he's looking for a new job. So uh, we were like super frustrated. Um, the OEMs were trying to sell new cars when you are like a Porsche or a Mercedes dealer and you want to bring someone into your brand, liquidity of selling the previous car is key. Yeah. Why are the OEMs not working with you? Because oh, I if the BMW customer comes to Daimler, to Mercedes, and they can take off the BMW and sell the new car, it would make so much sense. Is it just that they are not yet there in terms of their thinking? Are they scared? Or oh, what I do you think, think is going on? So they are, they are more than you think. With a lot of them, we have white label service agreements where we do, in fact, help them with the trade-in. But what you don't want is dilution of your brand, which we understand. So we offer them our tools, we offer them the technology. Uh -huh. um, some of them want to uh, license our whole platform. Um, uh, we're working for one big OEM in Europe where we will pretty much run a front end on a website, including choosing a new car and then trading in your old one. But um, at the end of the day, um, we have very, very complimentary offers for the customer. Because when you sell your car, obviously you want a new car. So in the beginning, it was really, first it was common sense. It was like, hey, if you sell a car, you need a new car. Everybody agreed, but said, perhaps we should ask some people. Then you go and then ask customers, and then it's anecdotal because you cannot ask 1,000 people. You ask 10 and you say, oh, yeah, really, really need a car. So then we went in and did huge surveys where we built in on our purchase app. Uh, survey tools and said, okay, what are you looking for? And do you need a new car? And how can we help you? And what are you looking for? And turns out, yes, they really want new cars. Yeah? They want to have a next car, uh, be it a new or an old one. So that we know for sure. And, and our, uh, uh, our mission is, of course, to be there for the customer, whatever he wants. If he wants to hop on the lease or rental or a scooter or a new car or used car, um, when you go here in Berlin, you see we work with one big OEM. Uh, where we help them get a new car and create vouchers where they get a discount. They sell with us and then get a cash discount at the other OEMs. Um, we have co-hosted with the OEMs. So uh, I think they are pretty They're open. waking up and there's more going on than we know and understand white label is sometimes the way to go. You rem the first time I heard the Auto One story, I said, wow, this, this has the opportunity to become what Amadeus or Sabre is as a GDS to the travel airline industry. You're kind of a... Switzerland marketplace, making sure that cars are becoming exchangeable from OEM to, to OEM. You extended your model this year yes. by entering into classifieds before the cars were exclusively sold to dealers, from private to dealers. I think 
How many you have? 30,000 dealers or 20,000? No, know. by now we have over 60,000. 60,000 car dealers. Oh. Uh, just as a comparison, like a Mobile on Auto Scout, I think it's like 20 to 30 in Germany. So you're, you're, you're very large. Now you are offering the cars also to consumers. Mm -hmm. How is this classified model? You launched it in April or when recently? Yeah, so How is it working out for you? Like, like many of our products, I mean, we started buying from the consumer, selling to the dealer. Um, the next uh, product that we developed was helping the dealer also sell to our dealer network. So we have a big, big remarketing the unit. Dealer sell also. It's yes, of course. Nice. Uh, so dealers came to us and uh, pretty much thought, you've got this, this nice iPad, yeah, the magic iPad that makes you buy those cars. Can we also have it? Which app is it actually? And we said, yeah, we developed it. And, uh, and of course, yeah, we can find a way to work together. Become a SaaS business then, additionally. Exactly. And then um, what our dealers and our customers always wanted was, the dealers said, what about all these customers you get in touch with? Th these are people, and they know uh, they are looking for new cars. And on the other hand, our consumers selling on our sites were like, what should I do regarding my new car? Um, so we said, let's take the power of Wirkaufen9Auto.de, which is a very well-known brand in Germany, and do Wegkaufen and Auto Fahrzeugmark and say our dealer partners can list and our customers can of course also list for free and also uh, look for their next car. And for the dealers, opposed to everything that's on the market, we want it to be 100% performance based and a very clean platform. Yeah? We don't want to cross list other dealers' products, we don't want to show ads for weather websites or God knows what, insurances and banks, we just said, okay, this needs to be a clean interface. Transactional, no? Very trans, yeah, it has to be transactional and that the dealers seem uh, to like because they think it's more fair. They don't want to pre-subscribe um, for large packages. They'd rather say, of course, if you bring me a customer and he buys a car, uh, I'm willing to pay, but um, if, if you don't bring me any customer, then that's your challenge, Auto One, then I don't want to pay. And that's the challenge we accept because we've got that reach and we can, we can offer that value to the dealer. Nice, nice. If you think about the future and car ownership, um, there's a lot of talk because the cars are only used for a few percent. Um, they are standing in the garage and there are a lot of sharing models. Mm -hmm. Is it something what, what concerns you? you? Or is it like, okay, well, there's like this thing coming, but you will have always like, What's your market share now? A million cars, you are like at 2-3% or... Oh. So 50% um, of the people will probably keep a car for emotional reasons, especially we Germans like to have constant accessibility to our favorite toy. Um, so you're concerned about that or you think this debate will could even work to your favor? A as, a, as a market maker yeah, or as the enabler of this commerce, we are happy if there are more transactions. And when you look at all the studies, car sharing, first of all, is, an, an, is a phenomenon in urban areas. You will not have it in, I mean, far outside in the countryside. But even in the urban areas, what the studies show is that the mileage per car will go up extremely. So now you will have cars today, car sharing cars or ride hailing so cars. More mobility. Yes, more mobility, more accessible mobility, cheaper mobility. But if the car goes 100,000, 150, 200,000 a year, and not 10,000 anymore, what will happen is you will have a lot more car changes. Now, here's where we come into play because at the end of the uh -huh. day, we're interested in more transactions. And um, that's why, I mean, so you we can also this, yeah. offer your service to entire fleets. Sure, yeah, which we do. What do you do or what could you do for the new rising Asian car brands? Do they see you as a strong platform and trying to use Auto One's assets? to sell more cars into Europe, for example? I mean, for any OEM, we've got the customer reach, we've got logistics, we've got the brand, we've got uh, uh, physical presence all over uh, the countries where we buy, all over Western Europe. And uh, um, we, we have partnered with a very small OEM now, uh, which is Ego. Uh, it's a very, very small, very interesting uh, full electric car. And um, th that is the first that has really understood all these modules that we can bring uh, from our toolkit where we say, hey, do you want remarketing? Do you want logistics? Do you want lead generation? Should we uh, help marketing your product? And um, that's, uh, that's, if you want, so the special first uh, OEM that uh, we're working on a, on a new product launch. 
Uh, but we're, we're, we're open. We must be brand agnostic. Yeah, we are a platform, and we will never be tied to one manufacturer, be it from one country or one group. Yes. Yeah, we, we, we're just the platform. Keep, keep your independence. Is there an IPO at some point desired? That's a very interesting question. <laughs> but uh, I think, I mean, we have a strong long-term shareholder um, that just entered our cap table, SoftBank Vision Fund, and uh, that is not a typical investor. They have deep pockets, I right? Deep pockets and a lot of patience that you can develop your business model and we will do what's best for the company, but there, I can tell you that there are no plans. Right but you now. haven't launched in Japan yet? No. Are you, do you want to launch in Japan at some point? Would that work there? Is there a comparable player to the yours? You have to look at every market um, um, separately. What is the local, perhaps also, taste? How do people trade used cars? What is the residual value loss? Which other players are there? What uh, logistics exposure is there? When we branch out of Europe, then you also get into a currency uh, yeah. and FX uh, play. So you have to analyze all these points and say, does it really make sense? And is it on top of the list? Or is there something else country-wise that I can do that's better? Or is there something else that we can do for our customer? And um, yeah, right now, I think you can see the direction is really going. What else can we offer our customer that really brings value to the table? Do you have an SMS notification about car valuations? I have this Tesla because I wanted Elon Musk to speak and they asked me what car I drove and it wasn't a Tesla. So that I was so excited about this whole Tesla thing. So I got a Tesla. He didn't came to speak, unfortunately. <laughs> and I want to sell it, but it's very difficult to sell a Tesla, right? So if I get an SMS notification that there's interest or the valuation or do you keep some of, do you, do you really? plan on some of these user kind of sticky tools well, where you I, I, I can tell you, you can sell your Tesla to us in 30 minutes and you're done. Okay. Oh. What's the price? What's the discount? Do you have to look at Schmacke or? <laughs> <laughs> I think, I mean, we will pay you. And I think that's important to understand. Nikki, the Tesla is going. The Tesla is going, yeah. Nikki hates the Tesla <laughs> no, because you're always flying around in there. It's so fast. So we need to get you a very small Porsche that is in, in yes. put in the seat. So, I mean, we, what we will bring you is you have one appointment and you pretty much show your car to every dealer in every country. And of course, that has a much higher reach, and, and, and we are just the enabler, if you want. Yes, we take it on the balance sheet. Are you in Switzerland you yet? Comfort. Switzerland? Uh, no, we buy it in the EU. Yeah. I think that's, uh, there's a lot of... See, uh, I'm stuck with my Tesla. You but I will give it, it another us. try. I will give it another try. Hakan, uh, it's always fascinating, and it's one of those companies, you know, when you have a winning concept, most founders are just scaling it and you are always looking at new opportunities, new, yeah, new products, uh, new services you offer. And it's for me the biggest lesson learned. If something works out, don't take it for granted. It will stay always like this. Be proactive and launch new products. Hence our five stages and our new concept. At I like location. it. Thank you so much, Hakan. Thank you very much. Okay, say bye-bye to Hakan. <laughs> Ciao. <laughs> Thank you so much.